someone came to me and said, there's a bug in explain plan. And I said, what's the bug? And they said, when I do an explain plan of a join between two tables, I'm not seeing all the tables in the, in the explain plan. So something's missing. And the funny thing is I actually said, you're actually not stumbled upon a bug. You've actually stumbled upon a very, very cool feature in the Oracle database. And let's have a look at that. Here's my table called emp. It's a copy of the scott.emp table. Here's my table called department. It's a copy of the scott.department table. So just the very simple two tables. I've got a primary key on each one, employee number on employee, department number on department table. Let's do a very simple join query. So select job, count of the department names from department and emp, join them on department number in the conventional way, group by job, and there's the execution plan. And this is what our post was expected to see. He said, I've got two tables in my query, there's the join, and I get an execution plan that the specifics of which doesn't really matter, but what, what was important to him was, I can see the department table, I can see the employee table, that's what an execution plan looks like. Let's do a couple of changes now. I'm gonna modify the department name to be not null, because every department has a department name, that would make sense, I should prohibit null data going into that column in the database. And one thing I forgot to do is obviously add a foreign key between department and employee because every employee's department must belong to a row in the department table. What happens now when I run the exact same query? Well, you get this what looks confusing as where the department table go. In fact, I'm just doing a table access rule on the employee table. But how is this possible? Because I've got a department name in there, I've got a join, I've got all this stuff going on. And this is what confused the person that asked this question. They said, is explain plan having a problem? It's not, it's actually doing something really, really super cool. To dig down into the bowels of this, we can do what's called a 10053 trace, which shows what the optimizer is doing. And then we simply run an explain plan on that query. If we dig down to the trace, we start seeing some of the things the optimizer is doing to try run this query more efficiently. The first thing it says, it says, yep, this is the SQL statement I've been given to optimize. And that's, you'll see this near the top, it says this is the current SQL statement. There's our original SQL. And later on, you simply says, okay, what are some of the things I can do? Well, because we made department name not null, we know that account of department name is the same as account star, because every single row must have a not null department name. So counting department name is the same as counting every single row, depending on now predicates, but it's the same. So we replace that. And it actually says, now our query looks like this. You can see it's select job count star from department emp and the join condition. Then we start seeing more information in the 10053 trace. This actually says, I'm trying to eliminate D. Because we have a foreign key between department number on department and department number on employee, by definition, every department number in the department must be the employee table. So we can actually eliminate the department D and now it says, this is the query that's remaining. I've actually managed to take out D and prove that this is actually an equivalent query. And guess what? Department's gone. At that point in the 10053 trace, you'll start seeing it now trying to do other eliminations, other optimizations, and finally it then starts to cost it to actually see what's the best way of running this final resulting query I've got. So if you're using 10053 trace, a really good idea is you search for the word final and that'll show you what the final query is then before it embarks upon looking at all the stats and stuff like that. But as you can see, it's a really cool little feature that the optimizer does. It's trying to do less work. And there we see, there we go, final query after transformations. And that's what it's actually trying to optimize. So it's not a bug, it's actually something really, really awesome. If I'd made department number not null on that table, on my employee table, even that where clause would have disappeared. So we actually end up with an even more simpler query, but I didn't actually add that extra constraint in, in this particular demo. You can do some amazingly significant things, or the optimizer can do some amazing significant things when you start considering really good declarative integrity constraints. Let's look at this example. Let's say I've got a list of stores, and into those stores come customers. So customers is a child of the stores table. And then I've got the sales table, which is a child of customers. So customers come into stores and then they buy stuff, they conduct sales. So let's do a little bit of demonstration using the, that particular data model. Here's my stores table. It's got store ID and name, address and country. I've got a customers table and I've got a sales table. Three simple tables. Let's put some seed data in there. So I'll put in 
50 stores. You can see connect by level 50. I'll put in 5,000 customers and I'll put in 1 million sales. So non-trivial amounts of data. I'll do the normal stuff. I'll put an index on the various ID columns. I'll put some indexes for other queries to run more efficiently. And then I'll do this particular kind of query. It might be some sort of analytic query I need to run every day. Show me by product the highest amount someone spent on a sale where the amounts were greater than $10. And I've got an outer join in there and it's a three-way join. It's a fairly complicated query. And there's my execution plan. And you can see the database has done some good work here. It managed to eliminate the stores table. We're just looking at customers. We're looking at sales, but we're just looking at a store index. So we've already had some benefit here. But I really just put this demo together to prove to you how important it is to actually tell the database more stuff about the integrity definitions. So let's add some primary keys. We had unique indexes before. Now we've got some primary keys. Let's tell the database which columns are going to be not null. They're always going to be present. Let's tell the database what the foreign key relationships are between those three tables. So every store goes back to a customer or every customer goes to a store and every sale gets linked to a customer. Let's now run the exact same query again, the exact same query. And let's look at the execution plan now that we've told the database more about the relationships. How cool is that? We didn't just eliminate the stores table. We eliminated all the tables. We're not querying a single table. We're only querying an index. Obviously, I've crafted this example to make it look most impressive. But you get an idea for how intelligent the optimizer can be when you share the information you know about the data relationships with the optimizer. It's very, very cool.